Pastor. Well, thank you to the witnesses for your testimony and your service to America. The costs and harms of the climate crisis have never been more apparent to uh, Americans and people all across the globe. Uh, Secretary Ratner, yesterday the Joint Economic Committee highlighted climate risks to the U.S. military, U.S. military bases and other DOD assets. They say it's a fundamental threat to our national security. This followed a 2018 DOD assessment of climate uh, threats to our strategic infrastructure, a 2019 DOD report, as well on climate impacts. They noted repeated flooding at Naval Base Guam as already limiting operations and activities for the Navy Expeditionary Forces Command Pacific and the island's Anderson Air Force Base, submarine squadrons, telecommunications, and a number of other specific tasks supporting mission execution. Uh, Considering the U.S. has more than 200 bases in the Indo-PACOM area of operation, and there have been 411 natural disasters, a typhoon which left most of Guam without power, uh, Anderson Air Force Base, Marine Corps Camp Blas with more than two feet of rain. What, uh, how do these climate fuel disasters affect our uh, Indo-Pacific military strategy, what's, what is DOD doing to ensure installation, resilience, and readiness, and personnel safety in that region? Congresswoman, I can provide you with a, a specific answer to that question following the hearing. I will say uh, this is clearly a major issue for the department. You have cited many of the reasons why that is. It affects our facilities. Uh, it potentially affects our ability to operate uh, in the event of severe weather, and it has destabilizing effects potentially on the, in the region, including for some of our closest allies and partners. So this is uh, an important issue for the department, and happy and the, to provide do the, you with Do the budget cuts uh, to climate resilience and programs at DOD hurt our posture? Congresswoman, again, I'll get you the specifics following the hearing, but uh, absolutely it's important that we continue to invest in, in uh, resilience, and we've seen some of the effects of this severe weather uh, recently, as you described. Uh, Secretary uh, Krinkenbrink, the Biden administration focus on strengthening relationships with allies and partners to counter the Chinese Communist Party has been very important. This includes climate resilience and clean energy. Can you talk about the importance of USAID, uh, the Development Finance Corporation, and the Southeast Asia Smart Power Program? Clean Edge Asia uh, to our national security and our interest in countering China? Yes, Congresswoman, thank you very much. I would argue that um, I would fully agree strengthening our relationship with allies and partners is central to our entire strategy, our security and prosperity in the region, and our ability to outcompete China, certainly for friends in Southeast Asia and perhaps even more so in the Pacific Islands. Climate resilience is an existential national security question. So our work together in building resilience on these transnational uh, challenges is incredibly important. The work that USAID, DFC, and, and others do uh, in the energy uh, realm uh, in promoting clean energy, climate adaptation, and resilience is really central to what we're trying to achieve. When you say central, you mean it's critical to the entire de-risking strategy, what you just talked about with Congressman Torres? I would say yes, ma'am, and, and certainly in Southeast Asia, I would argue it's even more urgent uh, among our Pacific Island partners. We talk about meeting them where they live. Our strategy is designed to cooperate with them on the issues that are most urgent for them. I think climate would probably be number one for almost all of them. Thank you very much. I yield back.